Hold on. The ambulance has to go past. <laughs> hey there, TOC Town and Team One Blogosphere. Thanks so much for coming back for Travel Tuesday. Well, today I have a special episode for you because it's Thanksgiving and Small Business Saturday where we support our small business owners. You know, I've been talking about a few of them over the years and I just want to say thank you and congratulations for making it this far. So this episode we celebrate small business owners in and around about the local community. Well for this Travel Tuesday I want to do a video blog of some of the things that I took advantage of while I've been traveling around and about not only in the Caribbean but also in the US. So stay tuned because I have a list, a whole list of at least 45 to 50 things that you can take advantage of in your local community as well as when you travel abroad. So it's not only that you can't afford to travel, you can afford to travel. But when you take in mind of some things that you can save here and there, it adds up. So the first thing I want to mention is this flashlight. It may seem like a simple example, but a lot of times when you travel abroad or even within the U.S. and some electrical tragedy has happened, your cell phone has given out, and there are no street lights in, on the road, you want to keep a flashlight handy. And mind you, this thing is only a couple bucks, you know, at Menards here in Chicago. So depending upon where you are, it may vary in price, but this makes a great gift for travel agents as well as those that travel around and about a lot. It comes in handy. And if I could show you a picture, the illumination is great for such a small, you know, little gift. So keep this in mind for maybe your next travel trip that you take as a travel agent or definitely, you know, this makes a good stocking stuffer for those that seem to have everything. Okay. So, and I wrote, you know, within my day designer, a list of 15, you know, we're going to start each episode with 15 examples of what you can take advantage of. I recently participated in a no spend October. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard that would be, even though when you don't have the finances to pick up something. The temptation to just borrow money or just, you know, figure something out in order to go buy what you want is heavy around this season. And now, especially with social media and the internet, you know, it just makes it so convenient to go ahead and make that per unnecessary purchase. I'm not talking about things that are necessary to buy, but I shared some lessons that I learned. I will be posting them down below. So in addition to that challenge, I started thinking about some other uh, things that have benefited me as an administrator throughout the years. So I want to go ahead and share that with you. Even if you don't view this until 2016 or 2017, some of these pieces of advice are classic. You know, so you can take advantage of them now or in the future. Put them on hold. Maybe they come in handy when you need them. So, I wrote a list down. So, hold on. <laughs> These planners come in handy. Okay. First of all, what I did was, every time I wanted, like, a book, you know, that may or may not be just released or fresh off the press, you know, I checked my local library for the material. The Library of Congress has a lot of information about a lot of different subjects. So a lot of times, you know, like consider Robert Kiyosaki, you know, when I first got introduced to his material, you know, I'm a graduate of, you know, Loyola University. So pretty much I spent a lot of time studying business, you know, and administration. So there are not a lot of new things under the sun. So I took my little card, I went over to the library, checked out his book, eventually I bought the whole set. 
and started applying a lot of what he was teaching. He's very much a great educator, you know, in the area of finances, which is, you know, a lot of things a lot of people struggle with after graduation. You want to pay down that debt. You want to, you know, manage a lot of what you currently own. So, you know, that's one thing. Go to the library first. Check it out. Your green card has a lot of advantages. Okay, and while at the library, another thing is, number two, is, you know, look up a, a recipe. When I first started, well, not first started, well, okay, when I started cooking from scratch, let's put it that way. When I wanted to start, you know, baking from scratch, I didn't realize how easy it was. You know, there are a lot of processes involved in order to make, you know, a good cake or, you know, bake a mac and cheese. Some of these people that I know, they know how to like, you know, put their foot in it as we say in the on the south side of Chicago. But one thing I did have to learn is that it's more economical to cook at home, you know. So what I started doing was every time I had a meeting, you know, to test out some of the things that I was creating and develop a better style and, you know, you have to develop your cooking style. So what I did was I took uh, some bananas that were overripe, you know, and I remembered you can make a banana bread. I didn't realize how easy it is just to get, you know, simple ingredients. One, two, three. In fact, I'll link below the ingredients that I use for my banana bread in case you want a recipe to take to your next meeting. But it ended up being a huge success. So that's one way to save money is not only cook within your office but bring a lunch with you and sometimes it could taste a lot better than the selections that you have in the restaurants. I'm not saying don't eat out but your budget will thank you later when you start cooking from home and even when you travel bring some food with you. Money saver. Okay number three is Streamline a movie. Another movie that I got from the library I'll show you a picture Mrs. Potter and mind you a lot of you may remember her from Peter Rabbit my mom used to actually read me the story when I was a child so that alone was not only a great find because I love finding out about authors and you know their, their life you know outside of what they created as a small business but it ended up being a great find as far as being an environmentalist and how much land she donated just to keep the work going. So that's one recommendation that I do have. If you're studying the environment and you want to be you know, more eco-friendly, rent a movie and then find out about the person's life and not only what they did to create the product that they created, but after they accumulated the wealth that they did, what did you do afterwards? This conversation can go on. You see why. <laughs> okay, number four. Okay, find out new facts and things. Like when um, my dad is a big uh, astronomer. We love, he loves studying the stars. I just love looking at the twilight. So one thing that I did do once we went to the Caribbean and came back because there were certain nights because we were so far out in the country you saw like a dome of stars. So I wanted to research even more, you know, what does the universe look like? You know, as as much as it um, exists in front of you, like you see the stars at night, it's ever expanding. You know, searching out a black hole, just don't fall in one. <laughs> searching out a black hole, you know, is one thing that you can find out. So even if you're traveling or you're going around and about, you know, finding new ideas and tips of the trade to save money here and there, you know, study the environment that you're visiting. A lot of places in Colorado, we've mentioned them in past previous posts, that you can visit but find out about the culture there you know maybe something about the food and we've gone to great lengths sometimes you know when i had uh, groups of kids around me is that we ordered from different restaurants that served that type of food from that culture it was delicious <laughs> okay number five start a new hobby you know planes and trains they can get costly after a while and this is one thing that I have to say about somebody saying you know what it costs too much eventually after time even if you visit too many sales and clearance sales 
you'll spend too much money and like me I'm doing inventory now to definitely I'm going to be doing some racks um, random acts of kindness to get rid of some of my inventory because I don't need all of the things I never use some of the stuff a lot of the stuff came in handy but you know what you can't afford your lifestyle you just need some ideas like this list is one of them of how to achieve it another idea is have a relaxing day you know a lot of times when you work in small business arena and you have to uh, go around and about you got you got to be in hustle mode you know but at least take one day out and just stay in your PJs I call them corporate jammies you know one thing that uh, our former first lady of Chicago uh, Mayor Daly's wife suggested to one of her uh, staff members is you need a PJ day whereas that all of us that are in small business and we're in ownership positions you know we need that day to relax and sometimes you know think through some of the decisions that we need to make you know it may be a great idea but because you're over exhausted over taxed overworked you know it turns out that the execution is not that great so that's my next recommendation do a PJ day dress down my next recommendation is visit the science and industry museum if you're in chicago if you're in other parts of the state you know there's other museums that you can visit either they're low cost days or they're free days sometimes and usually those days a lot of people visit at the same time but if you're doing all this money saving you can find days or exhibits that you may want to focus on depending upon your major or depending upon your field of interest that you can visit visit a museum okay take your favorite magazine home a lot of students that are developing their style you know and how they want to express themselves you know it's been done before in different kind of ways in different manner you can use your creativity in that way by researching a lot of the styles that have been you know formed and put your own taste and put your own style to it especially if you're learning how to sew take your time take a magazine home and look at and search the styles okay before you travel one thing uh, especially if you're going to Africa study the Egyptians you know the arts what was their culture like how did they create their pottery you know what did they eat with what were the hieroglyphics you know there's a lot of things that you can discover just by researching that's another money saving idea Okay, so far we have check out some stuff at the library. We have get a recipe, streamline a movie, you know, find out different things about the universe, you know, or the atmosphere that you're in. Start a new hobby, planes or trains. You know, stay comfortable in a PJ and receive, you know, great insight and information. You know, go to the Museum of Science and Industry. If you're in Chicago, we have five museums all in the same location. So if science is not your thing, we have another subject that we can always research or visit in a museum. You know, take your favorite magazine home. Explore the wonders of ancient Egypt if you're traveling to Africa. You know, develop a dozen synonyms. If you find one word, you know, find... 12 other words ways to say it one thing <laughs> I know this is I'm not getting on my soapbox but let me just allow me this one moment it is one thing when I started researching planners everybody's like I love this I love that I love 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 it's like you know what I don't love an inanimate object I love the people that created it the designer that made it so I had to start finding other words besides love to use during my post so Hopefully I'm doing a good job. Okay, excuse me. And the next one is pick out a science fair project. This is all you can do at the library, but also, you know, around and about your atmosphere. When I was a kid, this is one of my favorite science science uh, experience. We used to have science fairs, you know, in elementary school. And one thing I decided to do was generic products uh, came into the local grocery stores at that time, you know, and wanted to compare name brand with generic well 
According to my mom, the experiment was a very expensive one, but it was super fun. You wouldn't believe how many people were like, yeah, I'd eat the generic, in fact, pack some potato chips during class. I'm graduated now, so I can confess this stuff. I'm sure there are other things that you had to do in order to make your experiment successful. So definitely try a new science experiment. Find out, next one is find out how to make a DIY solar panel. With the environmental, you know, research that people do and calling everything green, do your own research. A lot of you can make a solar panel and guess what, I thought about maybe baking a cake or maybe baking some cookies might not be a bad idea. Save you some money, honey. Okay. The last but not least is discover a new mystery. A lot of things are not known or undiscovered because people don't take the time to research or learn about them. Well, if you're going into a certain field and you're approaching it from, you know, your environmental perspective, maybe you can bring something different to the discussion that they never thought about before. You know, a lot of the inner city kids that I work with, they're now wanting to become lawyers. So now they can affect, you know, not only the legal system, but assisting the community with the impact and what they've experienced themselves. So those are my 15 things to help you save money on for this Travel Tuesday podcast. If you ever need someone to arrange a trip for you, I'm available at toctown.com. And also you can personally email me at toctown14 at gmail.com. Thanks so much for your support. Make sure you like, comment, and definitely subscribe to our channel. We look forward to 2016. There's more traveling to come. Take care.